What's up guys, it's Kyle here, and in this week's video we're going to be making a 5 sensor line follower for the Mindstorms EV3. So this is a fan suggested tutorial. After I did the 3 sensor line follower, you guys wanted a 4 sensor line follower. And then after that, someone suggested the 5 sensor line follower. So here we are. And obviously the 5 sensor line follower brings up a little bit of a math issue. The EV3 has 4 sensor ports, but somehow I'm going to be using 5 color sensors to line follow. And the solution to that is the Mind Sensors Sensor Multiplexer, which allows me to expand the number of ports on the EV3 to use more than the normal 4 sensors. If you'd like to learn more about that, I actually covered that in a full tutorial last week, and I recommend that you go see that so you understand a little bit more about what's going on. Anyway, that's enough jibber jabber. Let's get down to making this super OP 5 sensor line follower. Before we start programming, I want to show you the hardware configuration of my robot. And it helps to think of the five sensors as being divided between two different zones. So in zone one, we have the front three sensors. So that's the front pair of sensors and the one sensor in the middle that's a little bit offset. Those are used for the standard proportional line following and they handle most of the line following over most conditions. So the very front left sensor is plugged into port one the front right sensor is plugged into port 2 and that middle sensor which is slightly offset is plugged into port 3. Each of these get their own dedicated sensor port so they have faster response time because the sensor multiplexer responds just a little bit slower than a sensor plugged into its own port. Then in zone 2 we have the two emergency sensors which are located behind the three sensors in zone 1. So these emergency sensors, when they see the black line, know to just trigger a sharp turn. And these are plugged into the multiplexer. So the sensor multiplexer is plugged into port 4, and the left emergency sensor is plugged into channel 2 of the multiplexer, and the right emergency sensor is plugged into channel 3. You also need to measure a target light intensity value, and this is quite a bit trickier than some of the other line followers that we've used in the past because what you need to do is line up all three of those front zone one sensors in a very special way so you need to place the robot on the line such that the left front and the right front sensors are seeing approximately the same reflected light intensity and then measure what that middle sensor that port three sensor is reading so in my case I measured about 15 percent reflected light intensity when both of the front two sensors were reading the same value. Now we're ready to start programming our five sensor line follower and to make things easier I'm going to split the program up into the two different sensor zones that we identified before so I'm going to start by focusing on those three zone one sensors which behave like a normal proportional line follower except of course with three sensors. So I'm going to start by taking out a infinite loop block and then I'm going to take out a few color sensor blocks so we could read the reflected light intensity on those three front sensors. We're going to start with the middle-ish sensor which is in port 3 and we're going to measure the reflected light intensity there and we're going to need to compare it against the target value that I identified before. So we're going to set this to subtract and I identified 15 percent as my target light intensity value before. So we're going to take the color sensors reflected light reading subtract the target value which is 15 and then we're going to take that result and we're going to multiply it and just like we use a proportional constant in a regular single sensor proportional line follower we're going to do the same thing here except your proportional constants going to be smaller because we have more sensors contributing to that correction so we're going to take this result multiply it by 0.2 and we're going to hold off on using this result for now then what we're going to do is take out two more color sensors. This time they're going to read the reflected light intensity in sensors 1 and 2. Those are the front two sensors. So sensor 1 is the front left sensor, sensor 2 is the front right sensor. And instead of comparing their value directly to that target value, we're going to have them be compared against each other. So we're going to subtract the value from the two. So set up your subtraction such that it's the value from sensor one minus the value from sensor two. And then we're going to take that result and again we're going to multiply that by yet another proportional constant. I'm going to set it to the same thing as before, 0 
um, even though the sensors behave kind of differently because these sensors are farther out from the front of the robot uh, you're going to sometimes maybe want a lower sensitivity on this again it's just trial and error and honestly I don't know how many people even really need to try their own fire sensor line follower but these are your proportional constants and you're going to need to adjust them a little bit then we're going to take the correction calculated by the third sensor and the correction calculated by the front two sensors and combine them using a math block so this is just simple addition so you take the result from this uh, and plug it in here and take the result from the front two sensors plug that in there so then it combines the corrections suggested by all three sensors finally then what we can do is take a move steering block set to on and take this result and use it as the correction to the robot steering and finally set some desired power value so I settled on 25 percent power which is a little bit slow for my robot but it has tall wheels and I put it as negative 25 because negative power makes my robot drive forward. So this is the three sensor proportional line follower for the zone one sensors. Now we can move on and program the two emergency sensors to complete our five sensor line follower. These emergency sensors are the two sensors that are plugged into our multiplexer and they control the sharp emergency turns. So we can start by taking out a switch block so then we're going to go over to the mind sensors sensor multiplexer compare color sensor reflected light intensity remember that our multiplexer is in port 4 so you're going to want to choose that and we're going to be checking out the sensor in channel 2 first and we want it less than 20 percent reflected light intensity so that means if the left emergency sensor sees the black line or a dark light value it's going to trigger the turn up here so to make that turn we're then going to take a loop we're going to set the loops exit condition to the color sensor uh, reflected light intensity of the color sensor that's in port 1 so if that color sensor sees a light value of less than say 30 so when it starts to see the black line the robot knows to exit the turn and then move back onto regular line following and then we need to program the actual turn itself so we're going to take a move tank block just simply turn it on and we're going to make it drive in the left direction so 15 on the left wheel and negative 25 on the right wheel again just remember that negative power on my serious robot makes that robot's that side wheel drive forward so that's why it might look like a little backwards here anyway so that's for one emergency sensor and then for the other emergency sensor we're going to do pretty much the same thing just in the opposite direction so we're going to take out another switch like this set it to the sensor multiplexer we're going to compare the color sensor reflected light intensity choose port 4 this time we're looking at the sensor in channel 3 and we want it less than 20 percent again but this time if if the uh, sensor triggers we're going to make a right turn so take out this uh, loop block set it to the color sensor reflected light intensity of the sensor in port 2 and we're going to set the threshold value to 30 percent again and then we're going to program the actual turn which is going to be a right turn this time so the opposite of what we did before so select on and then put negative 25 percent power for the wheel on the right uh, positive 15 percent power for the wheel uh, on the right um, <clears throat> sorry left right and then once that's done that's your completed five sensor line follower program and you can download this onto the EV3 brick and try it out here is the five sensor line following program in action.
All right, so some closing remarks on this five sensor line follower. Is it a super OP line follower? Not really, because the fact of the matter is that, well, first of all, it's not at all practical. I don't know how many people have five color sensors and a multiplexer lying around, and it's also not as good of a line follower as you would expect it to be. As a matter of fact, the two sensor PID, which I'm covering in a few weeks, and the three sensor line follower were some of the best performing line followers that I made. Then when I moved on to the four sensor and now the five sensor line follower, I found that they're not performing as well as either of those two line followers. So it's you're kind of seeing this law of diminishing returns happen. And it's a good example of how you can't keep throwing more hardware at your problem to make it easier. You have to just work with a less amount of hardware and make your robot more intelligent to be able to manage the hardware it has more efficiently. However, it is a pretty fun challenge, and I guess it's kind of a meme on my channel at this point to keep making line followers with more and more sensors. So I thought it was an interesting challenge, even though it was uh, a, really a pain to calibrate. It took like two hours. But um, I don't know. Let's see what, what's next. Do you guys want a six sensor line follower? Let's see. Keep watching to find out. Thank you for watching my tutorial this week. If you haven't already, click here to check out my new book. It's called Building Smart LEGO Mindstorm EV3 Robots, and it's now available on Amazon. If you found this video helpful, be sure to subscribe to my channel for more tutorials like this every Thursday. And if you have an idea for a tutorial, drop your suggestion in the comment section below. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.